Okay, we're gonna make some thigh armor real quick. And I don't know if you can really tell right here, but it's actually, uh, this subtool is actually two separate pieces. One is a strap that goes around his thigh. You can see it there. And the other piece is that thigh armor that sticks out. And uh, we talked about this in part one, but also uh, I'll mention it here. You can control shift click between multiple pieces of a single subtool to kind of hide and show. And like we did in the belt, I'm using that technique where I kind of um, keep the smooth modifier turned off and subdivide one level at a time and just kind of move to get those uh, the shapes I need, but also maintain those hard edges where I want them in lieu of using the uh, smooth group importer or going in and hiding edges and creasing them using the uh, crease edge function in ZBrush. It's fast. It's valid. Um, you'll notice I keep showing um, all of the subtool before I subdivide or it'll try and do a local subdivision. So before I subdivide, I go ahead and show everything, and then I'll subdivide, and then I'll hide what I don't want to see, which is usually that strap. I'm focusing on the armor right here. And again, I don't think I actually captured myself making that strap. You have you saw me make a strap with the decapitated head, so I didn't figure you'd want to sit through that again. And here I am, uh, again, winging this. Um making it something that's you know, vaguely has a face shape for a thigh armor piece, kind of a menacing looking something or other. I don't exactly know where I'm going, but... And again, this is going to end up looking hard-edged, but it's all sculpted, just using a standard brush and shift at this, this subdivision level. Uh, just standard and shift will actually get you pretty decent shapes to start out with. And then, of course, as you go up in subdivision levels, you can use the planar trim, trim dynamic, uh, flatten, polish, all that good stuff. And as I've probably said in every other video, I didn't have access. This is all in R2. Um, R3 wasn't released as I was sculpting this. Uh, so I didn't have access to the trim and polish, but you can get the same results uh, using other techniques. Just the, those, those brushes make it a lot uh, nicer. Again, I'm just trying to fill out what an interesting thigh armor might look like. And again, this isn't a character design DVD. If it was, I'd, I would have uh, uh, been a lot more careful. Uh, I wouldn't be winging it. Um, but, you know, ZBrush is a good program just to kind of get in and get your ideas out there quickly. So uh, that's, that's a valid approach, I suppose. And up around subdivision level 7 on this thing. I've got the smooth modifier turned on. And here I am with the slash 3 with the um, backtrack, which we talked about in part 1. Uh, line backtrack, so I can actually snap. And really, uh, really harden those inner pieces, or those inner creases out. And the cool thing about this armor is, uh, it doesn't need to be perfect. However, if you were doing a... Uh, I don't know, like a nice, clean, uh, something specific, like a Greco-Roman armor or something, and you really needed nice, smooth shapes. Um, you'd have to be a little careful, but a little more careful than this. Uh, I can be a little sloppy. And that was actually by design. <laughs> uh, you know, it's the same reason why you'd want to sculpt a, a crazy, um, bat troll, as opposed to something that needs to be perfect or a likeness, just because it can be done fast. Uh, and any sloppiness you can chalk up to, uh, as designed on purpose, he's supposed to be ugly, so whatever. But, uh, in a, in a real production, you know, you'd want to, um, use the right tools for the job. And if you did need to do perfect armor, definitely use the, uh, trim and polish to get that really nice, perfect look. And if it needs to be really perfect, uh, I don't know, maybe go into your 3D program and really flesh it out in there before you bring it in. But uh, with the new tools that ZBrush has and the new hard edge, hard edge techniques that we uh, went over earlier in this DVD, uh, I can't really think of much that you couldn't do just in ZBrush using those new tools.
Again, you probably saw a little peek of that strap I did off camera. Figured I'd save you the excitement of seeing me mull another strap. I'm going to distress this armor a little bit. And what we're doing here is we're using the layer brush, but we I want to make sure I don't have a morph target stored. So I went ahead and deleted any morph target that might have been in there uh, because using this distressing kind of technique, I want it to look like there are actually layers of metal or paint built up. So if I had a morph target saved, it would only dig down one level based on the intensity using the layer brush. So you should delete that morph target and then use the layer brush to kind of dig in uh, multiple levels all at once. And kind of use that as a distressing method. Yeah, it works on concrete too. Makes it look like uh, you know, something was shot and it got chipped away and there's you know multiple multiple la layers on top of this thing. Here I am just using the standard brush just to make some deep gouges like you know somebody's he's actually blocked something with this uh, armor a sword or an axe or something it's he didn't just walk out of the store with this thing it's been uh, used and because I started out with such simple geometry we're actually up to subdivision in level 8 there wasn't a lot to it and here uh, I don't know looks like he got hit with a shell or something kind of shattered it in a web pattern. And you know, he, he maybe he is in a medieval era where they only have swords and axes, or maybe uh, they do have some more sort of rudimentary uh, gun technology. And we're up to subdivision level nine now. And we'll probably just clean up some edges. Add a little bit of noise. Um, I'm adding noise to all this stuff. And would I really do that in production? Probably not. Um, most of it'll actually probably be overpowered by the by the uh, poly pan I'm gonna put on this thing, but just because it's there and just because you might need it, uh, I put it in there. But uh, I don't know if I'd put noise on all this stuff in real life. Again, yeah, just cleaning up those hard edges. It looks like when I added that noise, it did inflate it a little bit. So it looks a little bit bubbly. And uh, I think I do want to go in and correct that. Uh, just by dropping it down in a subdivision level later on. I don't know if I captured that or not, but you know, be careful when you're applying noise. You don't want to inflate your model, especially when you're doing hard edge stuff. Maybe some cleanup work. And using the old technique that I use on the pants and a couple of the other videos, uh, mask, smooth, flatten, inflate, and it can go across a pretty hefty seam pattern. Adding a little metal clasp there where maybe it's the armor started to fall apart and needs to be held together. 